गुड मॉर्निंग डी स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स वी विल डिस्कस लॉयल्टीज अ प्ले बाय अ थ्री एक्ट प्ले बाय जॉन गॉल्सवर्दी John Galsworthy was undoubtedly one of the most and the finest dramatists of his time. He was perhaps second only to George Bernard Shaw. Galsworthy was born in 1867 and died in 1933. Being simple in his habits and a humanitarian by his nature he settled down to a quiet country life in his country home he had a large number of cats and dogs and other pets he was a typical englishman and had a great love of sport in his youth but he soon realized with horror the tragedy of killing birds and beasts in his court he soon gave up hunting in various ways he also atoned for his serious for his serious lapses during his youthful days he went to slaughter houses and advocated more humane methods of killings golsworthy was of very generous nature his extraordinary generosity is seen again and again in helping his relatives in paying an old cab driver's rent in imparting gifts of small pensions to those who were in need he lived on less than half his income and gave away the rest of his earnings in charity he was a man of great self control his manners were reserved and his modesty was often greatly misunderstood for aloofness he never liked to talk of himself and his work galsworthy loved england but his patriotism was not of a narrow type in 1921 the famous club pen p e n poets and playwrights editors and essayists and novelists dear students pen p e n is an international club that is made of poets and playwrights editors and essayists and novelists was founded by the famous english novelist mrs dawson scott her objective was to link writers of all nations together in friendliness Galsworthy was the first president of the London Centre he was re-elected year after year to this office every time by unanimous vote till his death an aimless social existence did not long appeal to him however he travelled adventurously in the pacific and the far east on the voyage home he met joseph conrad the polish seaman who became a great english novelist and goldsworthy's lifelong friend he met other people who unsettled him he began to discover the dreadful london slums of that time from some of which his father drew rents and he was horrified by what he found the hypocrisy of his own class became intolerable to him most disturbing of all he fell deeply in love with his cousin's exceptionally beautiful and talented wife ada golsworthy who was very unhappy in her marriage for 10 years they maintained a secret love affair often traveling abroad together in those days a divorce was a major social action and golsworthy's father would have been deeply distressed by it so the lovers waited until after his death 
They married in 1905. John Galsworthy remained devoted to Ada all his life. Some people thought him slavishly devoted. She was shunned by most of their acquaintances because she had been divorced and it was this coming when he was already deeply unsettled which finally made Goldsworthy rebel against the social class to which he belonged while it was she who made him into a writer. Although there was no evidence at all except her own institution, she was absolutely convinced of his latent ability and reluctant as he was he could not refuse anything. Ada Goldsworthy helped and encouraged him constantly for the rest of his life. They discussed every detail of his work and she typed nearly all of it herself, often three times over for her. He, re he revised everything meticulously. When he was writing with difficulty, nothing helped him so much as her playing to him. She was a fine pianist and they both loved music. Goldsworthy wrote world famous plays. Some of the notable plays are The Silver Box, 1906, Strife, 1909, Justice, 1910, Loyalties, 1922 and Escape 1926. The present play Goldsworthy is Loyalties. Let's discuss Loyalties. Goldsworthy's first commercial success in the theatre was his 12th play The Skin Game 1920. Two years later his 14th play Loyalties scored another commercial success when yes dear students calls for these the skin game is a very famous play which was written in 1920 and loyalties is called another commercial success when he had finished writing it he said to his wife no manager will refuse this look at the confidence of Goldsworthy. after writing loyalties he said to his wife that no manager will refuse this and he was right. It deals with anti-Jewish feeling, discrimination against a racial minority which is still unhappily typical in many parts of the world. When loyalties was written, the anti-Jewish feeling was there in England and it was natural for Galsworthy with his hatred of injustice to deal with the question. In some respects, Loyalties is one of his finest plays. The terse dialogue, the skillful construction, the mounting tension, the judicially sympathetic characterization are typical of Goldsworthy. They all contribute towards making the play good theatre and it made also a popular film. Let's discuss the play. The play opens with an alarm. There has been a theft of 1000 pounds in one of the rooms in the Meldon Court. The Meldon Court is the country house of Charles and Lady Adela Windsor. The guests in the Meldon Court include Ferdinand de Levis, a rich young Jew, General Kenning, Kenning a, rich, a racing oracle, Margaret Orme, a society girl, Ronald Dancy, a young retired army captain and DSO and his wife Mabel. Before the play begins, we are told some important things about the affairs 
of these people. Dancy is newly married and is not very well off. In order to save the expenses of its keep, he gave his mayor Rosemary to D. Levice. D. Levice who was a Jew. D. Levice, having tried her rather highly, has sold her to a bookmaker for one thousand pounds. Very naturally, Dancy, the real owner of the mayor, mayor bears a grudge against D. Levice for this somewhat machinery transaction. It is more pinch, it's more pinching to Dancy because he is in financial difficulties while D. Levice is very rich. He won two horse races on the very day when the action of the play begins. Another important circumstance is that Dancy earlier in the evening won a bet of ten pound from D. Levice by jumping from the floor on the top of a bookcase four feet high. Dancy had made this high jump successfully. It now appears that D. Levice lost one thousand pound. The amount received for Rosemary between eleven fifteen and eleven thirty when he was in the bathroom. It is clear that someone must have entered the bedroom and taken the money from beneath his pillow. D. Levice comes to Windsor and informs him of the theft. Who is Windsor? Yes, Windsor is the owner of the Meldon Court. You know. Now, he suggests that the matter should be investigated. Who suggests? D. Levice. The matter should be investigated forthwith. Windsor is deeply chagrined that a theft should happen in his house. He is surprised. He is amazed. D. Levice suspects Captain Dancy of having stolen the money. However, at this stage, he does not say anything about this. Windsor is particularly vexed or perplexed or confused that one of his guests should be suspected of so mean an act. He also dislikes he also dislikes the idea of D. Levi's claiming the protection of the police. This is like treating the Meldon Court as if it were a hotel. He thinks D. Levi's is a young bounder. Even the color of his dressing gown shows that. Though he is tolerated in society because of his money, he is, after all, a damned Jew. His father was a mean fellow who sold carpets in the city. Dear students, you notice here the derogatory words, the derogatory phrases used by Windsor for D. Levice, who is a Jew. What he uses? Young pounder and damned Jew. Look at these derogatory terms. These phrases show a racial discrimination. However, for D. Levi's, a sum of one thousand pounds is important, and accordingly, the police are summoned or called. The police inspector comes, and the bedroom is minutely examined. The servants are cross questioned. The garden soil outside the window is carefully gone over for the trace of footmarks, but in vain. D. Levi suspects Dancy. The creepers on the bedroom window have been disturbed. D. Levi is convinced that Dancy took the long jump of seven feet 
during heavy rains from one balcony to another it is not a surprising deed for the young man after his leap on to the bookcase earlier in the evening canning and winsor are indignant at suggestion indignant means they are op- they oppose this suggestion they are anti they are contrary to the suggestion they have known dancy from boyhood he is an officer a gentleman a member of their set therefore above suspicion dancy himself is called in he indignantly denies the charge canning by change happens to lay his hand upon the sleeve of his coat it is wet the the, the sleeve of dancy was wet so this sleeve being wet raises the suspicion nothing more is said at the time the scene is transferred to a club 3 weeks later delivice has just been black balled for the jockey club he feels that he has been at let down by dancy's friends he renews his charge against dancy and insists on the matter being brought before the law courts messrs piston and graviter solicitors accordingly take up the case in dancy's defense while the case is being tried the missing bank notes are traced through their numbers they were sent by dancy to ricardo's an italian wine merchant to pay a debt of honor in which ricardo's daughter was concerned twiston tells dancy that he must give up the defense he also tells dancy that the best course for him is to leave the country and throw himself into the war then raging in morocco the most difficult part of dancy's ordeal however is still to come dancy has to face his wife what will she say when he makes his confession to her and she realizes that the man she admires so much has not only stolen 1000 pound but has spent the money in trying to hush up a love affair she had before his marriage she is a power to shield him from a police inspector and aid his departure to morocco a shot is heard from the adjoining bedroom dancy has taken his own life before committing suicide dancy wrote a note addressed to colford dear colford this is the only decent thing i can do it's too damned unfair to her it's only another jump a pistol keeps faith look after her colford my love to her and you and with this the play gets over tomorrow we will discuss the play act wise and scene wise that's all today and have a nice day keep tuned